So Denzel talked about getting into a positive conversation with people. Kev, how can we go about doing that as we engage with uh, trying to connect with people on the doorstep? Yeah. Uh, just a couple of things on that super encouraging video to watch and one of the things i loved about that you saw just a, a picture of denzel and sister Ines praying you mm. know um so it, it sounds a simple thing to say but i think before we want to be having conversations with other people we want to be having conversations with god um yeah. so let's root this in prayer um before we go out um but as we go out into these communities um as you knock on a door looking just for visual clues about mm. the person that may be behind that door if there's a pram on the balcony, there's probably a good chance there's going to be a, a young family living there. There might be some religious symbols outside the door, which will help you, in one sense, be on the front foot about think how could I shed, how, how could I start a conversation? Where may I lead this conversation? Um, and I think it also helps us think about, um, as Shane was sort of helpfully um, explaining, as the guys go out the door in Vauxhall, the, the jump to a Sunday service is probably a little bit too much straight away but if you've maybe got a toddler group or a, or a cafe or or a drop-in what 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 would be the one thing that you could maybe invite that person along to so again we go back to one thessalonians chapter two so we can start to share life with them mm. and we can start to share the gospel with them thank you kev and just now thinking shane as we seek to get into conversations you sister Inez was talking about this could be the last the last day on earth there's an urgency about it but how do we begin to share the gospel or get into conversations in a way that's relatable as well let's say not all of us are forces to be reckoned with are we and i don't <laughs> think i am either so if you're not a force to be reckoned with i think you know i always say to people who are ministering on the states who are doing door knocking 70 percent listening 30 percent talking back and that 30 percent is key for god's glory and for them to hear about god's salvation so when you go to someone's door, you usually introduce yourself and you introduce yourself in a relational way because I guarantee a lot of people listening to this podcast will think door knocking Mormons, JWs, or that meme of a dog sticking his head through the door going, you need to know about Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. How at LCM we seek to train to people at doors is much more relational. So as soon as someone opens the door, you could go, hi, my name's Shane. We're from Hope Church, Vauxhall. Our community's been through a bit of a struggle recently over the last couple of years. As a church, we want to love our community and we want to show Jesus. Yeah. How are you doing? And then we, I usually try and train people doing doors to have four stages of conversation. The first one, which I just said, you're introducing them to the church, Hope Church, Fox, all it was, introducing who you are, and you're introducing them as a Christian, yourself as a Christian. And also I mentioned Jesus in there as well the first time. So they know what you're about. You're not going around there being sly they know what you're about the second thing is um praying for them offer to pray a lot yeah. of people especially in the states are, can be quite open about their life and as you're listening to them that's 70 percent listening you can hear and be like right can we pray for you can i get others at church to pray for you and then the third thing is is bringing a gospel story a bible story a doctrine a piece of scripture into that conversation to show them what god thinks about their situation who they are etc etc and the fourth one repent and believe full gospel blown presentation if you want to call it that explanation but this four stages of conversation can happen in three minutes on doors or in four years it's all dependent on the person behind you but i think the big thing that we're trying to get across when we're doing door knocking and we're trying to build christ-centered relationships is that you're going around there to reflect christ you're honest about who you are and you want to take them on that journey where in the end you're giving them a full-blown gospel conversation but you're also in that introducing them to church introducing them to prayer and especially if you're in a local church on an estate and you're doing similar doors it's the same doors like once every five weeks you, people will start opening up more and more and more and before you know it you've got gospel centered relationships you're proclaiming the gospel to people they're coming into your ministries and there's too many people coming in and now you're starting to complain <laughs> <laughs> praise god praise Amen. god but and, and it takes perseverance though doesn't it you yeah. know i was out a couple of weeks ago and just aware that you know I, i've been knocking uh, on door after door and i'd had a couple of co um, positive conversations and then it wasn't so positive mm -hmm. for a while mm -hmm. and y you know you are intruding on people's lives in a way that they're not necessarily expecting and sometimes yeah. they are busy or yeah, they're yeah, yeah. In engaged in something but but the last door that i knocked on uh was uh, a man who was really cut up by the the death of his his mum mm -hmm. and was really struggling to know how god could have anything mm -hmm. to do with that 
but the way the conversation went meant that there was an opportunity to talk about how Jesus did weep Amen. at the death of his friend. And I was able to show him something about the connection between how he was okay. feeling and how, how God felt about that and situation. And that made that door knocking session worth it, just that conversation. It, 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 it absolutely So you might have did. had a number of non-doors that people didn't answer or they're like, yeah, thank you. But that one door at the end, which you had that fabulous conversation with, bang. Absolutely. It. And it was just the perseverance yeah, because yeah, it yeah. felt like that the biggest obstacle to that conversation happening was me. The yeah, biggest yeah. obstacle was me saying, God isn't in this. Let me just give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the perseverance helped. Now, as we think about this, and I'll just stick with you for a minute, Shane, because we're, we're on that, this sort of thing. Like, what are the uh, things that we need to be thinking about when we're relating to people on estates in general? So I'm going to give you some broad brushstroke themes. I get that people are individuals. But I think on estates, especially London council estates, I'm generally talking about, but this can apply to all estates across the country to a certain degree, there'll be nuances and differences, is that there is cultural traits that people share on London council estates, even if they come from different ethnic or cultural cultures, if we can say that. And I think there seems to be on estates a big mistrust of authority with people so they mistrust the council they mistrust the schools and they may see you coming from the church as someone they can mistrust as well there also is a mindset on estates genuinely of powerlessness now this works out in a number of ways mental health issues nostalgia but also as well a lot of people feel powerless and want to get out of their situation so they work hard mm. um they're very big on sports music get starting a business going into business that sort of stuff going to uni some people will be or doing an apprenticeship so you get stuff like that but it all comes from the mindset of people won't listen to me i'm powerless i need to do something so you either give up or go forth um we talked about mistrust of authority i also think the third one i think generally broad brush stroke is that for me personally, I don't have any statistics with this, so I just want to make people aware of that. From but from what I've experienced in ministry in the States, it seems like a lot of people have been abused in some way, especially by people in authority. So in a physical, spiritual, sexual sense, have been abused and they're coming out of that hurt and it a lot affects their worldview and how they would treat and speak to you. So I think this is why it's key what I was saying earlier about the 70% listening, because it's not just the States, let's be honest. We all love being listened to. We all love people genuinely listening to us and genuinely caring for us. And if you come with that heart and that attitude, even with these broad brushstroke worldview um, ideas and thoughts that the people from the States have, they will start listening to you and trusting you when you bring the gospel. Bless you for sharing that. And it, it does mean that there needs to be a real humility and gentleness as Amen. we do this. And, and actually, Close yourself with humility. I've been meditating on that towards one another. And absolutely. I think that's key. Absolutely. And and as we go about, we should remember this for all evangelism, but people are, are people and they're yeah. not projects. Yeah. You know, there's a sense in which um, we, we want to think about coming alongside people rather than being salesmen, trying to sort of just deliver a package yeah. and running away sort of thing. And just a quick one on that. Sorry, I don't want to take up too much time. But if you do a door knocking program in your church where you're visiting like a block or a road once every five weeks and say you went to the second stage of conversation and prayed for someone and then they gave you permission to pray with it at church, go back around five weeks later. Yeah, we prayed for you about your mum and her ill health. How's that going? You will see that person trust you even more mm. and open up more. So especially that door knocking, if you've got that strategy where you're visiting people once every five, six weeks and you're getting through those stages, people will start opening up to you. You can build those relationships, show Christ. And I think as we listen, like um, Denzel used that word, we're, we're being incarnational because we're modelling how God basically acts, isn't it? Like you, you, you see the Bible, like the Israelites crying out to God in slavery. Uh, you, and God hears, you know, you, you, look, you, you read the Psalms and, you, and, and I think um, an awful lot of people are, uh, that, that I've met on cancellation, I can't speak to God in that way that the psalmist writes out when he's crying out we, we, yeah, yeah, from his heart, as it were. And I think we, we're introducing people to a God who hears mm. and a God who listens and a God who acts. Amen. Amen. And, and I guess as we're thinking about things to be aware of when we're ministering on the state trying to connect with people on the state i guess we need to recognize that it's not going to be a smash and grab it's not going to be a short thing either is it yeah and i know you guys know that from your experience and um uh, i've experienced that too would you say anything about that 
Yeah, I think a longevity of ministry and a longevity of Christian witness in these communities is really, really key for a number of reasons. They're communities that have been forgotten about for an awful lot of the time. But even when there are, um, in one sense, maybe local councils or local charities have come in and tried to do things for the benefit of the community, often haven't listened to actually the needs of the community, mm. which is one where again feeds into that we're just we're just feeling yeah ignored here. Um, but when the funding runs out or the project doesn't work in inverted commas, what happens? They clear off. Do you know mm. what I mean? And I think that that leaves a mark that leaves scars on individuals lives leaves a scar on a, on on a, on the community so i think as, as as churches we need to be there for the long term through the highs and the lows of life and i think what that enables us to do as well is it lowers the bar when we start to build those relationships we'll go out in the doors for the first time we haven't got to share everything mm. in in a in a in a salesman sort of way. Yeah. I often, when I'm when I'm chatting with churches, I often talk about when I first met my wife. If I told her everything about me the first time I'd met her, she would have done the sensible thing and run a country mile. You know, it's over it, it's over the weeks and the months and the years. You you build relationship and you and and you share more with one another. Um, and I think that's the same with churches as well. And as we seek to reach into these communities. Thank you. Thank you.